The Summer Day by Mary Oliver. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean. The one who has flung herself out of the grass. The one who is eating sugar out of my hand. Who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down. Who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Um, the other day, I went over to a friend's house and I was walking around the side to go through her back gate. And as I was fumbling with the latch, I saw her son. He was lying on his belly and he had his chin rested on his hands and he was just staring. He wasn't moving, he was totally content. And I yelled out, I asked him what he was doing and he responded, I'm looking, just looking. <laughs> so, of course, as soon as I got the gate unlatched, I went over and I mimicked his posture and I laid down next to him. I too on my belly, my eyes as close to his level as possible, and he proceeded to list off everything that he could see. Ant, rock, grass, leaf, twig, baby jumper. And I was totally tracking until he said baby jumper. So I asked him to point out what he was talking about. And I followed his tiny, tiny toddler finger um, to the tiniest grasshopper I had ever seen in my whole life. Um, got it, baby jumper. And in that space, I was totally surprised by how differently I and this young boy see the world. Of course, we are super different in many ways. I'm bigger, I'm older. In some ways, I would like to think that I'm smarter. However, I think that I, and I think that all of us, would benefit a lot from taking the posture of this child much more often than we do. However, we don't really get to do that very often. Our world is full of 100 things pulling our attention in 100 directions at the exact same time. And simultaneously, somehow, we're still all super distracted. Um, I will drive home on autopilot, not noticing my scenery. Um, there are other times where I find myself pushing through students who are being a little bit inefficient rather than slowing down to celebrate their moments of growth. And there are other times where I do not want to pay attention. Our world is full of things that are horrible and shocking and are somehow growing more and more familiar. And it makes me want to deactivate everything, unsubscribe from everything, and hide under pillows and blankets. But I think that there has to be a better way forward. And I think that way forward can be found when we are as willing to mimic that posture of the belly down toddler as we are to take the posture of the hunched over, obsessed, consumed adult. If we're gonna grow as a society, I think we have to do two things. First, we have to ask those really big up and out questions. We have to look to the furthest places that we have gone and we have to say, I can go there and then some. But I think that if we're going to truly evolve, both as a society and as individuals, we have to go down and close on our bellies like the toddler. So the toddler and the poet both find themselves drawn to the grasshopper and I too join them. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? Oliver starts off with really big, all-consuming questions because it's really natural for humans to ask all-consuming questions and it's really important and it's really good. However, she quickly moves on. She says, this grasshopper, I mean, the one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who's gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. So this is that zoom in moment. This is the focus. This is the belly down perspective. She asks specifically about this grasshopper. And in doing that, she forsakes those big all consuming questions in pursuit of a tiny and very specific one. Um, and we have to do that. Unfortunately, it's not very easy for most of us. 
it's a skill that we have to practice. Observing very closely doesn't come naturally to probably any of us. For me, it feels kind of like a muscle that I have to flex or continually be strengthening. And I think that that muscle is the essential one if we're ever going to tackle those big, all-consuming questions. We have to learn how to really, truly see things. Now she lifts her pale forearms and washes her face. Now she snaps her wings and floats away. So almost instantaneously, the poet's eyes are pushed back up. The thing that she was noticing and observing so closely, it floats away. The tiny grasshopper goes back to the larger world and we see it properly in its context. So um, we see it properly in its context. The invitation to see things and pay attention to them very closely, it's an invitation to, yes, see them closely, but not to ignore everything else. So when we pay attention really closely to things, it's not so we ignore the global, all-consuming crises. Instead, it's to see both the small and the big things properly in context. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. So after we've asked the really big questions, who made the world? And the small questions, who made this grasshopper? We find some breathing room. These lines are full of peace and stability. They're reminiscent of the posture of the toddler, belly down, lying in the grass. And finding this balance between the two is the only way for us to move forward. It's an invitation, again, another invitation for us to just keep doing what we already know how to do, the things we are familiar with. This time, however, we do them with an added layer of attentiveness. After we've noticed the grasshopper, what else in our world do we need to notice? Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? So we find ourselves full circle. We return back to those big, all-consuming questions. But this time, we've arrived at them through the space that Oliver invites us to, that belly down, paying attention to space. When we don't arrive at them through this space, we're totally thrown off balance. We're consumed by the big when the small is begging to be noticed. So here's my challenge to you. Find a space and get on your belly, literally or figuratively, and see what you notice when you take the time to pay attention. Thank you. Hmm.